Hello everybody and happy Thursday. Today I have a special guest with me that's going to be talking all about how to look better on camera when using your green screen. And let me just uh, turn this down a second. There we go. Okay, so as we know, green screen can be complicated, but it doesn't have to be. And we're going to be talk talking about some simple workflows to get you up and running with your green screen. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my guest today is uh, Martin McKenna. Martin, welcome to the show and thank you so much for joining me today on this wonderful Thursday. And welcome to sunny Edinburgh, where it's in fact freezing cold and not at all sunny, <laughs> but uh, of, it of occasionally course. is. Well, um, thanks um, for joining us, uh, Martin. Um, it'd be great if you could just tell the audience a little bit about you um, in terms of when did you start using Ecamm? And, uh, you know, when did you start sort of integrating that into your workflows and, and where did the whole green screen thing start for you? So I guess I've been using Ecamm for a good couple of years now. And it really started after lockdown because I used to run conferences, so large face-to-face -face events. And that kind of obviously disappeared off a cliff um, as soon as COVID came along. Uh, so I found myself um, in a position where I needed to be communicating to, with people, but in a way that looked better than Teams and Zoom and things like that, or at least to up my game within those platforms. And I came across Ecamm, started playing about, and uh, then got myself a green screen and did some really terrible green screen stuff to start with. Um, then learned a little bit more about cameras from Adrian Salisbury and how to get a good setup and some good lighting. Uh, and then I went back to the green screen again and found out that things were a lot easier. So um, I guess today what I'm going to be talking about is uh, how green screen doesn't have to be frightening or horribly difficult or anything like you would normally see on the non-green screen, fake green screen that you get on Zoom and Teams where bits of people's heads disappear and uh, you suddenly see a plant pot in the background coming out of somebody's ear or, you know, those sort of things. So none of that needs to happen with Ecamm because Ecamm is fantastically good at green screen keying if you do a few things correctly. Um, and hopefully I'll, I'll take you through a few of those a little bit later. But um, yeah, I, I would say starting off with green screen, it won't necessarily be right first time if you just try and do it yourself. So go have a look at a few videos. Um, I've got a few up on YouTube that I've started to put up um, just to help people through the whole thing because uh, people are absolutely petrified that you need hundreds of lights and uh, incredibly uh, special rooms where you painted everything green and all of that sort of thing. And you just don't need it. You just don't. If, and I have to put a category or or put a comment in, which is if you're doing sort of head and shoulder shots like this. If you want to go all George Lucas and run around the screen with your lightsabers, that, that's a different ball game entirely. Um, and even if you want to have a kind of a wide screen look and feel with two people on it, you're going to need a bigger green screen. But as you will see shortly, um, in fact, let me just press a button here. Why not? Why let not? me turn my green screen effect off you can now see my green screen that's how big it is behind me so right. not not particularly uh covering the whole screen ecamm does clever stuff for you and i'll show you that a little bit later when we come to uh looking at the different uh, effects that the green screen uh, you can change with your camera effects within ecamm that will have a major <laughs> effect on how you look on green screen I think one of the things I've noticed as well is people people try to do green screen with either a webcam or the laptop camera in the days of Zoom and Teams and things like that when it obviously was popular during lockdown and, and that can have a really sort of detrimental effect to the quality because if your image isn't sharp, if you're not very well lit, as typically people weren't <laughs> when they first started mm, doing mm. all these things, then that can really start to break up the picture and just make it look fake, as you said. So I think, I think yeah. lighting in camera is important, but as you mentioned, you don't have to go overboard and start paying thousands for huge amounts of lights 
on the most expensive yeah, camera, it, right? I mean, you're a camera guy, but in my in my basic head, the way that I look at it is, if the camera is giving good data to Ecamm, then it will interpret it well. If you're giving poor data to Ecamm, then it will not be able to interpret it well. So yeah. the camera giving good data, ultimately it's all ones and zeros, right? So Ecamm is trying to look for an outline of you and if the quality of the data coming from the camera is good, then it can do uh, the job that it's meant to do within Ecamm. Uh, so if you've got a, a terrible little webcam and terrible lighting conditions, then the data is going to be uh, garbage. So garbage in, garbage out. Yeah, and I think it's a very good point you make in terms of the, the contrast, the separation between you and the background to make as a cleaner line as possible to give the keying software within Ecamm the best chance possible to make that outline smooth, not pixelated, and have any sort of artifacting and, and fragments. But I guess you'll mm. talk us about your uh, setup and uh, how uncomplicated it really is compared to, to others mm. that we've seen and, and so on. So yeah, why don't you just uh, crack on and, and show us your um, sort of setup if that's where you wanted to start and just take people through sort of the basics and it will go yeah let, let's i'll tell you what i'll do what i'll do is i'll run through uh, a couple of different scenes that i've got set up all right cool um, just just to show you the sort of different things you can do on green screen because one thing people have a tendency to do is to try and make it look super real you can have some epic fails if you try to make green screen look super real so i would suggest if you want to keep things simple that what you want to do is to look good on green screen but not necessarily try and make it look real because somebody always going to say, oh, that looks fake. So what we've got here, gentle motion background with a bit of blur on it and me looking quite sharp on the edge. But I can do lots of different things with the green screen. So let's let's run through just a few examples for fun. So if I want to do a whole sort of motion background here in a sort of newscaster type way, I can do. And I could bring on a load of uh, comments or a load of uh, what time of day or weather is going on or whatever uh, I want really in the background and everyone knows this isn't real however it, it's effective um, and it looks reasonable because we've got a little bit of blur in the background we've got some depth of field in the background a little bit of motion in the background and some interest um, of course I could go like this and choose a totally different version of an Edinburgh background for me. But again, it, it's purely a matter of choice. Um, I could go something like this and have mini me's popping up as recorded previously on green screens and a bit of wallpaper in the background. And I'll come to this a bit later, but you'll note perhaps uh, what I'm wearing here uh, with this sort of beige colored jumper or camel colored jumper is standing out quite nicely from the background Whereas the mini me there wearing the dark blue or black uh, is sort of blending into the background. So minor things like that you might want to think about. And if you're going to go not real, you might want to go the whole non nine yards and, and do a manga background. It really doesn't matter. You can play about with the backgrounds to your heart's content uh, with Ecamm. And don't, don't go mad trying to make it look like you're uh, outside at the beach and have your lighting uh, according to beach lighting or fireside lighting or something like that. If you want to start off easy, then just don't pretend or don't try and pretend you're real. Getting Looking good and fake is just as good. So I always get asked about the gear and, and we touched on it briefly with Neil there earlier. So just for information, and Neil will be able to tell you much more about the camera stuff than I do. But I'm using a Sony ZV-E10, uh, which is, I guess, the, the, the blogger, vlogger's favourite at the moment. And a Viltrox lens, 23mm 1.4. And that's given me quite a tight crop. Um, so I, I am able to get away with just a regular pop-up green screen. So mine is 6 feet tall and 5 feet wide. I would highly recommend that you get one with a scissor action. So the scissor action at the back means you just grab the handle at the top and pull it and it will go up by itself and stand up by itself. That just means that if you want to push it down and store it away somewhere because you're not using it all the time, it is pretty much 
instantaneous. Now, Elgato do a very good quality one. Um, because I'm a bit of a cheapskate, I went to Amazon and got one at about half the price that did exactly the same job. You can get a wide green screen as well. As I mentioned earlier, you only really need that if you've got uh, two people on your shot or you're sort of doing loads of stretching or something because I can move out of shot and lose my arm here because I am in a, a limited space. So if, if you're not doing that, you're fine. If you're wanting to jump about and dance about, then yeah, go for the, the bigger green screen covering your whole area. You can just use green screen material or, or hang something up behind you, pin it to the wall. You can do that as well. Uh, people say that's difficult and you have problems with shadows and stuff like that. I haven't found that to be the case at all. I found that Ecamm will deal with pretty much anything, providing it is the correct color of green. And there is a correct color for that green screen background. I can't remember what it is, but just Google and it will, you'll find out what that color code is. Um, so don't think that just any green is going to do it for you. It has to be the green screen gear. So that's the gear. Now, here's the other thing. That's lighting. I use exactly the same lights that I use for my regular stream for green screen. And frankly, I only normally use three of the ones that we're seeing here. So I have a key light, the big Godox globe that sits above me. And that's, uh, we'll come to exactly where they sit in a few minutes. And then I have a hair light that sits slightly uh, above me and level with my chair. And then one of these little LED lights pointing at the green screen. So it is important that you light up your green screen separately from yourself. But essentially it's just three lights that I use. Um, occasionally if I'm doing something a bit more complicated or moving about a bit, then I may add in extra lights. But Generally, it's just the three lights. So what do they look like and where are they sitting? So the Godox one is to my left and about a couple of feet away from me. Um, behind me, directly behind me, uh, about three feet away is the green screen. Between me and the green screen is the little LED light, which I'm using to light up the green screen. And then directly level with my chair, and in this case up to up to my right hand side but pointing down towards my hair and slightly towards the screen so that's not the greatest picture there it sort of twists around slightly towards the screen uh, is the hair light now these are not expensive lights other than the godox one the godox one is a couple of hundred dollars once you've added the the lantern on it but that will give you a good um, sort of rounded uh, light the other two i think it's 20 pounds for the small light and 40 pound for the hair light uh, and that's it uh, the green screen itself is roughly 100 pounds and then that's you set up again for the lighting perspective you're using exactly the same lights uh, as you would do anyway so it doesn't have to be hundreds of lights everywhere forget that that is a total and utter myth unless you're running around the room other things to note, uh, the hair, the chair, and what to wear. So the hair, I should, if I take my hat off, you can probably see my hair's a little bit fly away there. It's not too bad because it's short at the moment, but if it was a bit longer, that would start to cause problems. And certainly if you've got spiky hair or curly hair or something like that, uh, then that can be an issue. So I just put a cap on because then uh, Ecamm can locate the outside profile of me very, very easily. Alternatives to that, uh, just a bit of hair care product, whatever that happens to be, or tie your hair back or something along those lines. Hair is a big problem, especially if it's spiky or fly away or fluffy or you've got a big afro. It, it's probably going to be an issue with green screen and certainly in this simple lighting scenario that I pointed out. The next one I've said there is the chair. Now I see loads of people on green screen and they've got these big gamer type chairs. And uh, the problem there is that the software is gonna have a big problem working out what is you and what is the chair. So you may well find bits of your chair appearing and disappearing. In particular, if you've got a headrest on the chair, 
that's got one of these sort of mesh backgrounds on it. That's probably the worst thing you can have. So how do I deal with that? Um, I personally, I just drop a bit of green screen material over the back of my chair and the whole chair just then vanishes straight away. Um, alternative today, I noticed Fulgen's doing it. Um, he just pulled a black cover over the chair and he found that that made a lot of difference. So just beware that what you're wanting to do is get Ecamm to pick out your profile. If your profile is being interrupted by bits of chairs sticking out in the background, it may well get confused. So get rid of it. Just easy to do. A little bit of green screen material. You can probably buy it for like $10 off of eBay. Throw it over the chair. And the next is what to wear. C clearly, <laughs> step number one, don't wear anything green. Uh, you can actually get away with uh, some darker green colours and it will be all right. But the green screen will do weird key things and change the colour of stuff. But um, don't wear shiny things because you'll get shiny reflections off your shoulders and stuff like that. So here I've got a fairly soft jumper on and the light actually uh, is absorbed slightly by the jumper, I believe, through trial and error. I get less reflections if I've got something uh, softer on. And then uh, the third one with what to wear. Uh, obviously, don't wear any fluffy jumpers. Fluffy hair is bad, but a fluffy jumper, a mohair jumper, would also be a bit of a disaster. Uh, wear plain colours as well. So if you're going for the black T-shirt, that would probably work extremely well in terms of picking you out. But it may be that you're starting to blend into the background a little bit too much. So I've chosen this time around to contrast with the background. Um, in other occasions, I might want to blend in with the background. But just have a think about the colours and the things that you're wearing. And don't go wearing some sort of heavily uh, tight checked uh, jumper or something or shirt because it, that, that's not going to be particularly successful. So the key here is it's looking for a plain and simple line to pick out for your profile. So if you help it out by giving it a plain and simple uh, uh, surround, that will help a lot. So backgrounds blur, depth of field. So obviously on this particular slide, um, I've got a bit of a blur going on in the background. There is in fact a tiny bit of motion going on in the background in, in beyond the edges of the screen here. Um, but those sort of things in the background can make a big, big difference on green screen. So if you just go to Envato Elements, for instance, and pick out an office and bring it into Ecamm, it's going to look fairly rubbish because the office is going to be crispy, crispy uh, in terms of look and feel, and it's just not going to work. But what you can then do is you can add a bit of blur using Ecamm over the top of that office, and that will improve things. I would also say when you're looking for a picture, look for one that has got depth of field in it so that the space behind you will look a lot bigger. If you just choose an image which is very flat, then it's not going to look great on green screen it's always going to look super fake but if you get one with depth of field that's going to improve things so those three things uh, in combination will, will help you look much better so what else um, just going to show you the green screen uh, areas to play with uh, within ecam so in my uh, camera window here. I guess the first one I would tick is there's me not on green screen and you can see a little bit of green material there over my chair just in the corner as well but come back onto green screen and that's going to disappear. So in my camera effects window obvious one is green screen on or off. We then have transparent on or off and that's going to bring in the standard backgrounds that Ecamm has if you don't tick uh, if transparent is unticked. If I tick transparent, uh, as it says on the box, it's going to give me a transparent area. So anything I've got in my background scenes is what you're going to see uh, within the picture. We then have um, the fade level, which is probably the most critical thing or, or the thing that has the most effect when you start moving it about. So if I move my fade level down the way, you can start to see these horrible lines that you will get uh, on a lot of other products. If I go the other way, 
then I start to disappear. So that fade level, tweaking it up and down to the correct level will get you to where you want to be. I tend to find it somewhere in the early 60s on Ecamm, although my eyesight's so bad I can't read some of the, uh, some of the little numbers that Ecamm produces. So those are a couple of things in the picture settings you might want to play with. But you might want to also look at your brightness and your temperature because they're going to have a, a, an effect on how you look on the screen as well. So you can go way too far um, or way too low so you're looking ill or falling in with the background. So you might want to play about with those and you might want to play about also uh, with uh, the, the LUTs as well, which will affect just you on the camera. They're not going to affect the background because we've effectively keyed out the whole background. But you might want to have a look at LUTs like that as well. Some people like the effect, other people don't. But they, they certainly will make you look considerably uh, different on the background. But that's all you need to worry about within uh, Ecamm. One little trick I should mention is if you've got multiple scenes going on and you've gone to your first scene and you've set it all up and you're really happy with how it looks and how your green screen looks and everything like that, but you've got cameras on multiple scenes, remember down the bottom of the uh, window here there is an apply in all scenes button. So when you hit that button, if you set camera A up perfectly on your first scene, it will ripple down all the other scenes exactly the same as your first scene. If you don't, you'll find yourself going into every individual scene and then trying to set up your green screen on every one of them. So it's not blatantly obvious, I'd have to say, but um, that, that will save you a bag of time if you've never noticed there is an apply in all scenes button. But be aware that if you don't want it to apply in all scenes, then you hit apply in all scenes, it's done. Right, so so just just watch out for that. So uh, really, that's just a few hints and tips on, on different things that you can do with Ecamm and playing about with the product to get totally different uh, backgrounds and different looks and feels of green screen. I'm just using standard lights, nothing other than that. I'm not doing anything particularly clever with my camera. All of this it is just very, very standard, simple stuff. And, and nothing too complicated and nothing expensive either. That's um, super useful. And I uh, just had a couple of comments coming in saying that's uh, it's really useful what uh, you're sharing. I just had a couple of questions around um, the material for the green screen. I've seen people uh, try to use green cloth uh, and is instead of a, um, you know, a roll up paper screen or mm. whatever the, the, stuff is made out of does have you had any experience with that have you ever tried using a bit of green cloth to start with before you bought your fancy uh, yeah, cheaper screen I, from amazon I have, yeah i have so um hang on ah here's here's one you prepared earlier like in the old here's days. one i prepared earlier so that's your green just cloth on, uh, just put it on full screen all oh, right okay so that and with wrinkles because i know wrinkles sometimes matters but yeah that what does that it look like? See, this, yeah. It's not particularly wrinkled or anything or unwrinkled. Right. It's certainly not super <laughs> flat. But Ecamm right. will, will do the trick for you. And that's the, just it's the bit good. that I normally have sitting sitting over my chair so, so I don't have this white banding yeah. which sits on the edge of my chair and confuses green screen a bit. So, yes, a piece of material in the background is fine. Um, people are always saying that there's problems with shadows and lighting and stuff mm. like that on green screen. I've never, ever found that that is an issue, providing you put some light onto the green screen. So by having a light directly behind me pointing at the green screen, then that seems to do the trick, along with the hair light to separate me out from the background. So yeah. I guess they're the only two slight tricks, but th those are the same lights that I would generally use anyway right. um, albeit i would probably have a colored light pointing backwards some people also use uh, green lights as well so they'll point a green light at the green screen oh, i've not tried okay. that myself actually i don't know whether it actually makes any difference what color the light is you're pointing at the screen providing it's lit i would i would think though that you might get especially in smaller rooms you know we don't all have big studios myself included it's in the small room i think if you had a green 
light shining at a green screen, if that green screen is quite reflective, you are going to get some green spill on you. Mm -hmm. And then the key is going to have a real problem with, with trying to sort of key out you, maybe then have some artifacting, especially when you see, and I've seen this in, you know, back in the day where you have this uh, green fringe all around you and trying mm -hmm. to key that out back in the day and things like um, Adobe After Effects and Final Cut, it's really hard because then you end up shrinking the image down but ecamm seems to be really good at just taking what you throw at it within reason of course if you're mm -hmm. sensible and follow the steps that you've told everybody about today it's pretty good at just removing that background pretty easily um i'm not sure if it works with a blue background as well because there's obviously blue screen and green screen you just sometimes see people use mm. especially on weather forecasts and things um these blue screens but i personally haven't tried it i haven't even tried green screen with Ecamm, but you're encouraging my, me now to think maybe that's something I can add to the workflow and uh, get a green screen at some point and just play around with it. Because it, it's it's super easy once you know what you're doing. And I think once you've set those settings in Ecamm, it's almost like set it and forget it. If you're not going to change your lighting, if you're not going to change your camera settings and things like that. Um, not to put you on the spot, do you know what camera settings you've got at the moment in terms of, because I was... Um, Listening to uh, Anna and Fulgin's um, video la uh, last night, uh, or this morning, should I say, regarding green screen. And they talked about, um, just from a camera perspective, shutter speed and, and frame rates. Now, when we stream, typically we're either streaming at 25 frames a second or 30 frames a second, or if in the US, 24, 50 or 60, depending on what you do. 60 is for the gamers. You know, 60 is zero motion yeah. blur, looks like a Spanish soap opera. Looks like a new show, you know, really smooth, <laughs> almost like back in the old video days. Personally, I always try and shoot in 25 frames a second. Um, I'm just curious, what what do you shoot it in? And do you know what your um, your your sort of um, the rates are that you've configured your camera to? Or is it just auto right. or you just leave it? <laughs> <coughs> I, I just leave mine as it is because I did what Adrian told me to. And that was okay. It. So I'm now going to I'm now going to read what it says across the bottom of my camera. Not okay. really knowing what it all is. Okay. So no worries. one fortieth f two point zero. Okay. Um, ISO one sixty. Okay. And then there's another figure of point three, point zero okay. point three. All right. So so so, so, all, so all... now you can interpret what those all, <laughs> all are. <laughs> um, right. So the um, the one of a fortieth is your is your uh, shutter speed. So you're in quite a low shutter speed. Um, typically, if you're shooting at a frame rate of 25 frames a second which is typical for the uk and europe then you would be doubling your uh, shutter speed so that would be one of a 150th because uh, it i mean technically it should be one of a uh, you know 48 if it's 24 but uh, but you're shooting at a lower frame rate so it's interesting because um Anna and fulgens were almost at the one of a 100th one of a 200th yesterday so to, to have no motion blur but when you move your hands i can see that there is a little bit of motion blur when you're moving but that doesn't affect your green screen and your keying. Um, so you're also shooting at a at a reasonably medium ISO, which is a 400, and then your aperture is is quite low. I think it was, was it F1 point something you said? I can't remember what you uh, said now. 2.0. 2.0. So that's giving you a reasonable shallow depth of field for the type of lens that you've got, because I think you're running a 23 millimeter or 24 millimeter lens, something like that. So, so all those are going to have an impact. But if you then were to put that on a not so decent camera, maybe your your mileage would vary, right? Maybe you're going to get some some different. But but your, and this is why you know I asked you to come on the show is because your green screen setup, um, of all the green screens I've seen, previously, seem seems to work really well. And I was surprised when you told me that your setup is is as simple as it is. So this is really achievable for anybody, providing they just um, take care and look at some of the caveats that you've mentioned. And what's interesting is um, you mentioned, you know, the colors of what you're wearing will have an impact. I know obviously the greens and blues and anything within that mm. sort of hue range is going to have a problem. But but picking something like you're wearing today, wearing a hat, I don't think it would work too well for my hair, or, uh, or things like that <laughs> might, might impact it. So you mentioned a darker suit or a darker top doesn't work as well. Uh, when you tried it is that is that fair to say oh i think that all depends on what your background you've chosen so today oh, i see this right. sort of purplish background here and when i went on to the manga scene a bit earlier on 
if I was wearing dark blue, I would have kind of disappeared into the background. So I've intentionally right. chosen a color that that separates me from the background. So it's another layer of separation, if you like, uh, and helps the outline of me to, to stand out that little bit more. So you're not just um, talking so, about you you being separated in terms of contrast and color between the green screen itself and what you're wearing. You're also talking about the choice of artificial background, the AI, the AI background, whatever overlay that you're putting um, as the yeah. background also has an impact in terms of whether whether that will look good or not. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, and I think I, my in my head anyway, the way I always think about it is um, the way that you would pick, paint a picture, an oil, uh, a watercolour picture, which is the things that are at the front of the picture are the crispest, darkest bits, and the bits behind you get a bit lighter. So if you do it the other way around, it doesn't work as well. So, right. um, that That's what I tend to find anyway. So in most of the ones, uh, I'm aiming for a bit of depth of field. And if I've got, for instance, something in the window in the background, then that will be lighter in color than I am. And uh, I will do that by dropping opacity down on what's in the background. Um, right. That way, if you were looking at an oil painting, a watercolor painting, you will find that the things that are closest to you are the darkest. And as things go into the distance, they get lighter. So I'm just trying to recreate that. Not, not on this particular view that I've got right at this second, but when I'm uh, using the sort of news screen background. So let me jump into that news one. And in the background, I've got the background dropping off and being a bit lighter. So the opacity on the background uh, is, is dropped down and it's a bit of a, a, a slightly more washed out color. And that's so that I stand out more um, in, in front of that background. So that, that's why I have done it like that. It's to give me that depth of field and looking a bit like a sort of watercolor painting with things fading off into the distance. But I stand out quite a lot at the front of the image. Right. And um, I'm not sure how much you want to go into today, but I know we spoke a little bit about some of the um, the elements that you're actually showing. So the newsroom or everything that you are showing today, you've actually created yourself, right? So you've you've layered these yeah. up, you've, you've created these in Ecamm uh, and things like that. I'm not sure if you wanted to talk about anything that you've um, got in the works or anything that you wanted to plan. Um, I'll just leave that with you for a second and I'll just go to some comments to see if there's anybody saying anything <laughs> about anything today. Um, well, at least, um, hello, Mark. Thanks for joining. And uh, yeah, it is really helpful. I'm, I'm learning a lot. I'm not a green screen person myself. Haven't really considered it. Um, I don't have a typically messy studio, but if I did, um, but you can mix it up, right? I mean, you can just now put a green screen behind me and you can, you can have any, um, background or any visualization that you want which is great uh and who else have we got here oh hi uh eileen how's how's it going oops let me just switch that over there i cannot get this working my comments aren't working very well uh today unfortunately with um ecamm uh green it's the um the restream isn't sending comments anymore to ecamm so it's a restream yeah, right. problem so i'm having to use this third party plugin and obviously i've i've completely incapable of using it clearly but there you go. Um, so let's move on. Anything that you wanted to uh, mention about these uh, backgrounds that you're uh, that you're doing? Well, what I'm currently doing is putting together a whole package of pre-prepared backgrounds and motion backgrounds and scenes for Ecamm. Uh, yet to be revealed, but there will be a store coming soon where you can go and get all of these. So if you don't fancy doing all of the hard uh, work that's involved in putting everything together, but you do still want a newsfeed background, then you'll be able to go get that newsfeed background and then just put yourself on green screen in front of it. And in a similar vein, there'll be a whole load of uh, different profiles that you can choose from uh, that have got the kind of thing that I was using earlier when I was doing the, uh, I just dropped down to this, uh, this type of thing with screen shares in the background and some motion in the background. Uh, there'll be a whole different 
range of these uh, with with iPhones and with with two people on the screen and one person on the screen, all the sort of things that you would use for a standard uh, sort of show that like we're doing today. So everything from countdown timers all the way through to uh, end of show type stuff, um, but with multiple different backgrounds and multiple different views and you just download them as a profile an ecam profile and for those of you who don't know once you do that you just open up ecam click on the profile and it will load all of the profile for you so you're done no work at all um, fantastic so that's that's the idea that's the idea anyway and um, um... and this is just making it very easy for people because all then they would have to do then is just assign their cameras add some text or tweaks or whatever they want. And it's just basically getting rid of all the heavy lifting that they have to do. And people can get on with, with doing what they do best and, and broadcast their show and, um, and do all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a lot of people will keep saying, you know, the content is king. You can have a brilliant right. background and if you've got no content, then it's no good. But if you've got a load of good content, then why not complement it with a good background? That's, that's my principle. There are other right. people who disagree. Um, but if you look at any sports show or news TV show or something like that, nearly all of them have got motion backgrounds going on. They're not necessarily distracting. They could be something gentle in the background, uh, which is just an eye break for want of a better description. And I think that uh, doing that uh, is definitely uh, you know, a matter of choice. But in my view, I think that that is a better thing than just square boxes uh, and everybody always sitting in a square box. So definitely, I mean, uh, you're right. Content is king, but if it's not presented very well, then yeah, people are going to uh, turn off. And I think subtlety is key. So having um, little or very subtle motion in your background is good because people mm -hmm. don't want to be looking behind going, Hey, what's, what's going on behind you? They want to be mm -hmm. focusing on the, on the person. We do have a question actually from, from Mark. Let me just bring this question on here. And the question is, uh, would it be possible to have a scene for multiple remote people and make it look like they're in the same place? So multiple guests, um, I think Mark is referring to, and then green screening those and making it look like we're all in one place. That's a, that's an interesting question. Mark. Yeah. So the answer is yes. Yes, Mark, you can do that. And I have done it. So uh, I think I've only ever done it with me and one guest. Um, but basically, I had my uh, fake office type background news type background going on, and me sitting to one side of it. And then I get my guest to dial in. And they are on green screen. So guest one comes in on green screen, I place their camera on the, my scene, and then go up to the guest one camera in camera effects, and choose green screen and adjust all of the fade and the light and all that sort of thing. Exactly the same I, as way I would do it for my own camera. I just do that for the guest camera. So you and the guest, um, in my case, it was Brian from Toronto was sitting next to me. And for all wants and purposes, it looked like we were in the same room, but he's sitting there in Toronto with a bit of green screen material behind him. Tip there, if the other person has got Ecamm, don't let them change any settings. All you want them to do <laughs> is to sit there with green behind them. If they're going to try and change all the settings, it, it's not going to work. You, as the host, need to change their settings and apply them to their camera as guest one. So yes, it, it works remarkably well. All you need to do is make sure uh, that things like your head sizes and stuff are similar. So mm. clearly, if you're sitting next to somebody and they're completely different, their head's ginormous and it's just their shoulders, then that's <laughs> not going to work. You, you need to be the same sort of profile for it to work properly. But yeah, it's, it's infinitely possible. And it looks really great, actually, um, because most people will go, oh, is, is he there with you? And because he's not, but uh, it, it doesn't even occur idea. to me. Yeah. That, that that would be the case. So. You've definitely given me an idea for a show now where we should try and get a green, uh, either I get a green screen or I get another guest on who has a green screen and try and put those together and, and uh, let somebody like myself re remote produce it, whereby we'll just bring them together. As you said, don't, don't touch anything. Um, especially if you have, obviously, it gets, it would be really cool. I don't know how this would work. If both 
backgrounds had some motion in them, well, that gets tricky because then, you know, you got to get the timing right. But if it's a static background, a static green screen mm -hmm. background, at least with some flair in it, then it's going to look pretty good, I think, if you've got sort of two people together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's And that's the saying. I think the main thing about it is that it doesn't even occur to people to question the fact that there's two of you there. Um, right. So, um, and... You know, until, of course, you then look at somebody and then realise you're looking the wrong way, which is <laughs> you which you would never do if they were sitting way, next that, to you. That way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you're going to do every time when you're on the, on the camera. You've got to remember that it's, it's all reverse, isn't it? Um, I think Teams yeah. tried to do something. Was it Teams or Zoom that had Zoom that had this together mode where you could... you? I, I seem to remember now it was a recent thing before I, before I quit IT um, that you could put... So there was 10 people in a Teams or Zoom conference, you could switch to this together mode and you'd, you'd basically have like children heads on, in a auditorium type view where they would be plonked on these different chairs. And it'd be almost like you could right. then share the auditorium thing. So you'd have a screen in front of them and they'd all be looking. <laughs> it, it looked, I tried it once, it was the most bizarre thing. But as you said, you know, cause people were in different sizes and shapes and we didn't have the versatility of Ecamm where we could mm -hmm. tweak you know, the zoom and pan where we could change some of the attributes of the colors just to get that color balance right. Because if somebody's really washed out compared to somebody who's oversaturated, for example, then it is going to look mm. fake. But if you, with, with Ecamm, you can tweak that and make it look mm. uh, almost like you're in the same room, which is cool. So um, yeah. anything else you wanted to share with us? We, we have a little bit of time. It's, it's <clears throat> you've shared some great well, stuff at the moment. Okay, a couple of other hints and tips then. Um, when when you're putting together your virtual backgrounds, um, some people I've noticed will perhaps go for a background with a whole load of shelving on it because it's you know it's quite fashionable to have shelves behind you and that's cool. If you're going to try faking that and putting objects behind you uh, onto those shelves, be very careful because, for instance, if you took uh, a plant or something like that and it's a photograph of a plant, even if it's one on a green screen background from Invato Elements or something, then the photographer will have lit that plant up with certain lighting to make it look good. That lighting will probably not match the lighting in everything else on your shelving unit in the background. So it will look awful. It will probably also be out of perspective. So it might tilt forward slightly or tilt back, and then you put it on the shelf and it just looks ridiculous. The way around that to some degree uh, is that you can go to Invato Elements and choose 3D objects, and it will give you a virtual object in 3D that you can rotate around. So literally you move the mouse around and it will move it forward and backwards and change the angle. So you could play about with that and then put things in the background and then blur them slightly to, to try and uh, make it look a little bit better. But be careful about dropping objects in the background, whatever they are, unless they are part of an original single image. Because if they come from somewhere else and you drop them in the background, they just might not work at all in terms of perspective or they'll be leaning slightly forward or lit up heavily at the top or or something like that so uh, be careful what you do in terms of building your background up uh, when using uh, multiple different layers um, but you can get some really really cool effects using gen I ai now as well so if you want to generate a background you can do that but you can then uh, also grab a photo that you like 80% off, put it into something like Photoshop, lasso the bit you don't like, and then ask it to fill that with a Christmas tree or something like that. And it will just do it. And it will give you three different versions to choose from. So I would, that's what I tend to do. And then there's a lot of uh, cropping of uh, the pictures it produces because Gen I AI tends to produce pictures with lots of ceiling and lots of floor on it, which you don't really want in your, in my sort of tight crop picture, because that would just look stupid if I've got a whole load of floor behind me and a whole load of ceiling above me. I'm going to be shrunk into the middle, and perspective-wise, it's going to look ridiculous. So um, 
there's a lot of cropping that goes on when I'm doing these things, but uh, the sort of the very recent, I mean, it's only a couple of months that Photoshop has got this generative AI capability. Uh, I found it incredibly powerful what you can do with that. So um, anyone who hasn't gone and had a look at that, there's a, like a million YouTube videos on it now. So, uh, so and all of them are less than three months old. So go, go have a look at those. Uh, there's some people doing some really creative stuff with it. And uh, I will be doing creative stuff with it because that's what I'm using to generate a lot of my background images that I then uh, tweak about so that they are more suitable for use with Ecamm and streaming. So, um, so yeah, go have a look at that. Um, I was on mute there. I've, um, I've played around with the, the Photoshop component where I've had a, an image from somebody that I was trying to do a thumbnail for, and it just didn't fit in the right aspect ratio. So as you said, you know, you just add a little lasso tool and, and, and then you don't put anything in the generative AI fill piece and mm -hmm. you just say, just fill this out. So that's really useful, but I've never tried to create something from scratch or add a plant or a tree. Or a cat, mm. in my case, or something like that. So yeah. that would be that would be really, yeah. pretty cool. So can, and it's just can, in its I mean, infancy, it's... right? That's the thing. It's it's just starting. I mean, six months mm. to a year's time, we won't even be sitting here. We'll just I mean, the avatars took, we're talking to, right? I mean, if you took my picture right now, how I look right now, and mm -hmm. dropped that into Gen AI, and then wanted to add in an extra couple of inches below my chest, there, it yeah. would literally extend my jumper down the way for me and it might even like stick a desk in front of me or or something like that it will do it will just magically extend the picture if my head was cropped off and half my hat missing it would magically decide that oh he's probably wearing a cap and it would fill that in and you'd be amazed at what it would do uh, for you of course occasionally it will get it entirely wrong but most of the time it will it will do a very good job without you typing anything in at all it will yeah. just follow on from whatever's there and effectively extend it so i don't know for instance a picture uh, which has got a shelf in the background with three three shelves in the background if you asked it to extend it um without giving it any instructions you will probably find it'll add another two shelves and it'll put items on those shelves that look similar to the items on the shelves below it in the picture because it's that clever um, so <laughs> right yeah there's another reason not to go and get stock items and then drop them into your shelves because you can just get gen ai to do it for you and it'll do a much better job no reason not to these days um phil joined us and he basically said that he he's a big dog lover so you know it's um it's basically using he's going to use ai to generate all his all his dog pictures now and things like that but he takes such great dog pictures anyway phil you don't you don't need to do that um <laughs> but anyway um great stuff so martin um currently i think you have your which you just popped up there your youtube channel the uh the uh, mm -hmm. pirate podcast is that where you're going to be publishing new tutorials tips and tricks for green screen and also when you are ready to launch maybe some of your backgrounds and things like that that's where people can find you for now right yeah for now so it's not very well organized right apologies everybody i started off a youtube channel a couple of years ago uh, and <laughs> then sort of got a bit well sidetracked and then relaunched it fairly recently in terms of me putting up content so there's about right. eight new videos up there at the moment the plan is to do a whole load more um, between now and christmas and gradually be launching that out but if you want to see the latest stuff then go see the eight videos subscribe to the channel and no doubt within that channel i'll be talking more uh, about uh, the shop front which is already assembled there's already 20 different uh, themes that you can choose from. Each one has three different backgrounds, so effectively 60 different themes to choose from. Um, so that's actually already in place, but I'm wanting to add in some motion backgrounds, some transitions, um, maybe some keynote stuff at some point in the future. So all the sort of assets that you might want if you want to get up and running quickly. I always liken it to uh, uh, one of these cake mix type things if you want to make a cake and add in your own oil and eggs then you can make a cake if you want to start from scratch then you can do so so effectively what these things are 
are the cake mix. You can still make a cake, make it your own, but you're not going to have to go and find the 30 different ingredients and measure them all out and, you know, put the pinch of baking powder in and a pinch of salt and, a bit, yeah, and so on and so forth because I've done all of that for you. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a great, it's a great um, plan because it's really just helping people shortcut this creation process where they probably, you know, like myself, I'm not a great graphical artist, unlike yourself. So, mm. you know, it's it's just making it so much easier for people to just pick those overlays, pick those presentations, apply the branding that they want, and boom, off you go. And then you can start producing your content and tweak and change it yeah. along the way, right? And and the fantastic thing now with uh, 4.1 of Ecamm is that even when you're doing all of your branding stuff, you can put your logos on and things like that, you can literally cover the complete screen uh, with a color, turn down the opacity a bit and ask it to blend things. And suddenly you'll have changed perhaps what I've produced that might be purple to, to green, if green is your color or whatever it may be. And you can put a gradient on that or whatever you want. But with Ecamm 4.1, it's really easy to change the color of everything uh, completely in the background and to match stuff up uh, with with your branding as well. So, um, yeah, fantastic for that sort of thing, yeah. I think. Ecamm is a fantastic product. And, uh, you know, shameless plug here, if anybody wants to take up the free trial for Ecamm 14 days for a Mac user, if you're into video production, and let's, let's be honest as well, Ecamm isn't um, always used uh, for live production like we're doing today. Um, myself included, I do a lot of recorded material using Ecamm. I don't use it all the time for live. It's my sort of go-to for uh, recording the video, doing uh, some post-production work on it, recording all the audio stuff, getting all the overlays and just making a full video production much more simplified. And then if you add green screen into the mix, you've got a a second dimension to mix up your views. You don't have to keep moving studio, buy new cameras, changing lights. You can just buy some of Martin's assets, plug in your green screen, and you can have a different show every day if you really wanted to, which is um, one of the, the great yeah. things. So you and, can mix it up, right? And, yeah, and, and I think a lot of this, I kind of developed using uh, Keynote as a background before you could do anything in, in Ecamm, really. So it would be me, me on green screen, and then I would do a screen share and share my keynote deck. And that's what would be in the background. And that would be where all the animations were and everything to do with that. But I've used it for business proposals and recorded business proposals as well. And I've found it, it works really well and differentiates you from the competition. Nobody else is doing a video proposal for, for somebody. So if you're doing a video proposal and it's got all of their name uh, upon that proposal uh, in animated lights effectively, and then you go on and do your thing on green screen in a way they've never seen before, then I guarantee that your proposal when compared with your competition will get through the first gate. I don't guarantee you're going to win the business because that's going to be dependent on the quality of your product, but your proposal will definitely get past the first hurdle because they'll want to see it. That's simple as that. Yeah. And, and as you said, it's just elevating you above everybody else and it's making you uh, stand out from the competition. So, so you can, yeah, just, just shine with the, uh, with the video production work that you're doing with an Ecamm, especially using all your overlays. Um, anything else you wanted to share before we, we wrap up? No, I, th I think we've done a good hour. That was pretty good, wasn't it, really? Yeah. Shot yeah. by. We've, uh, so, we've exhausted nice all your tips and tricks. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, yeah. Martin, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. I hope we can do this again, maybe when your uh, shop is launched and we can show off some of the things that you've got within those assets. Looking forward to that. And um, yeah, thank you again for joining us. And uh, thanks, everybody, for joining as well on the live stream. And we'll see you all in the next show. Bye-bye for now. Thanks, Martin. Bye for now.